room today. Look, let me just tell you, when I'm in the dye room, I'm looking a hot mess. So excuse the way that I look, but there's no sense of um, looking um, decent when I'm about to um, be full of water and dye powder and all the things. So today I'm going to show you one of another one of my favorite techniques. And um, this is the technique I use to get this colorway. Um, and I just love the way that this yarn um, looks. It's, I love super variegated yarn. So where literally like every stitch is a different color. It's, um, it's just one of my favorite uh, colors, like color ways to play with because it's like, it's an experience as you crochet or as you knit, you get to watch different um, colors pop up and you don't know what color you're gonna see next. So this is why I love dyeing yarn this way and I'm gonna show y'all how I do that. So bear with me just a second as I flip this around and get y'all to where you can see what I'm doing. But I really wanted to show y'all, I'm not doing this exact colorway, I'm just showing y'all what um, it looks like and then I will share with y'all what colors I'm using. So. Join in the fun as I dye this yarn and we're gonna go on a quick little ride here while I flip the camera around so you can see me dye this yarn, okay? All right, bear with me while I get all of this set up and I get the yarn for y'all to see. So I have it heating up and it heats up faster when you put the lid on. So it should be nice and hot and acetic. I did go ahead and put um, citric acid in the water before I added the yarn. Sorry, I wanna put that hat in a safe spot so it doesn't get wet. Okay, so what I, I have four hanks of yarn in here. And as you can see, there's water in here, but the yarn is above the water. Um, and it's super hot and ready to receive dye. One of the reasons why I want um, the yarn hot for this technique is because where I put it, I want it to strike and I want it to stay there. I don't want a whole lot of mixing of colors. So that's why I have the yarn hot. And that's why I don't have a whole lot of water in the pan. So that's just one of the tricks that I use when I want to layer colors and I don't want a whole lot of mixing. So I will be um, using dry powder today. I won't be mixing it in water before adding it to the yarn. So I'm going to put on my mask so I may be a little muffled, but say hey as you join and let me know if you have any questions. Um, and I will be back to check the comments shortly. All right. So I have five colors here because I'm the type of person that I like a lot of color on yarn and uh, three just wasn't enough. So I'm starting out with this gorgeous, let me see if I, you can see this, sapphire blue color. And I literally just dip in my measuring spoon Get a little bit of dry powder and then just kind of randomly place the dry powder in spots and then I press down. I may add just a little bit more water because it did get pretty hot and as you can see it's not really um, hitting every place or it's not really taking the powder or the color in every place. So I may add just a little bit more water. But as you can see, like when, where it lands, it strikes. And there's not a lot of like moving around. Whereas if it was 
if there was a lot of water in here, you would see it kind of spread out and move around. So let's add just a little bit more water so I get a little more bang for my buck with that dye powder. So let's try it. Just kind of fill in some of those white areas. And again, it's all about what you want your end result to be. I don't want a whole lot of white. So that's why I went ahead and added just a little bit more water. But I will be adding four other colors on here too. So I need to save room for them. I may come back and do more sapphire blue, but I'm going to move on to the next color. And again, I'm just doing the same technique, just random spot here. The other reason I like to do this is because you can see we get different shades. Right where I press down, where there's the most amount of dye, you get a darker color. And then as it dilutes, it's a lighter color. See, I think we even got some purple forming right there where it mixed with the blue. So I'm gonna let that set for just a minute, which I don't really have to worry about it mixing too much because there's not a lot of water, but I have another pan I'm doing the same technique on. So I'm gonna do that real quick before I dive into the next color. And you know what, I may be able to swing this over a little so you can kind of see what I'm doing over here too. And again, I have this same issue. I don't have enough water in the pan, so I'm going to add some water. It's been a while since I did this technique, so I'm a little rusty. Okay, let's get some more blue on here. Now we'll go to the other color. I hope you can kind of see this. If 
So like this yarn here on the ends kind of get them seated. So I'm going to make it feel it went and left out here. And I want that a little darker. So you can really just play with it however you want. You want it lighter or darker or all up to you. I got really carried away there, but it's going to be pretty. So let me move this back so you can get back to the original pan here. There we go. little bit of purple even though we made some purple there I still have some purple I want to add just in a few spots so I'm starting out being very hesitant with this color and I can always build from there, but I knew in my head that I wanted a lot of blue, a very little bit of purple, and I wanted some of this pinkish red color. And then I have these other two colors over here that I'm gonna kind of fill in the white areas with. And I feel like those colors, if it works out like I have it planned in my head, those colors are going to kind of tie these colors together. The bad thing is, is I can't remember what spots I put dry powder in. As you can tell, I'm like fumbling around in some areas and I'm like, oh wait, I didn't put it in right there. <laughs> okay, so we're going to let that set. I'm going to work on this other pan real quick. And I'm going to do the same thing. Just pick a couple spots, press it down. And then I have two more colors that I want to add in here. At least two more colors. Who knows? We may, you know, I may get to playing around and decide that it needs more. That's the bad thing about me and the dye room. I can be a little dangerous because I go in with a plan and that plan may change. All right, so now we're going to come in with another color. I actually think I'm going to do this color first. So this is a lighter blue and it's one of my favorite blues. Um, it's called Frozen, I don't know if you can see that, by Dharma. And I really want to hug the other blue. I feel like it's going to make that blue pop.
We'll add just a tad more water. I'll do the same over here. There we go. Okay, so that is all I think I'm going to do for that blue color. And let's see if I can twist you over here again. Here we go. We're going to do some more. Same thing over here. So see how I still have a lot of color in that corner? I want to be really careful not to add any more color there because I don't really want to, I don't think blue and purple are really going to muddy it too much, but I don't want to make more colors. So I'm staying away from that corner for now. kind of going for a wild ride today. So I have this other color and I'm not sure. I'm hoping it's like a, I'm hoping it's a green blue. We're just going to test it out in a spot and we're going to see if it's what I think it is. And if not, we'll pick a different color. Okay, so it's really close to the other color we already have. And that's not really what I had in mind. Let me just give it a minute just to see. I want more of a green. Hmm, let's see here. Y'all get to watch my brain or listen to my brain work here. Huh. What? Let's go with the old trusty dusty emerald green. I think I'm gonna try that. And it's just a couple little spots. I think that green is really gonna tie the other colors together. But I just want a little bit. So let's go back over a little, little test spot here. Cover that up. 
Yeah, that's kind of what I'm looking for. So I think what I'm going to do, because see how layer in these colors, that red isn't quite as vibrant anymore. I think I may go back in and just kind of touch up those red spots. We'll see. We'll see. So you see how I just kind of pick colors? And then I just slowly build them up. I, um, I love this technique, but it really does take a lot of time. So I don't do it as often as I used to. But it's worth the, it's worth the time because you really get just gorgeous, one-of-a-kind yarn. I don't worry too much about some of these white spots. As you can see, some of the white spots coming through <clears throat> because I am going to be flipping this and repeating the same technique on the other side. And so sometimes when I'm moving this yarn, I'm actually getting through to the other side. So I don't worry too much about the white because when I do the other side, I can flip it again just to kind of see if I took care of all of it. I do want very subtle hints of white. I just don't want big areas of white. So we are done with the green, I think. Let me look at it one more time, just to be sure. I feel like we have a heavy area of green here, here, and here. I feel like I need more green, like a darker green spot, maybe here. Because these are, there are four hanks of yarn in here. So I need to be fair to the two in the middle here. And maybe right here too. There's that, and now we'll play with this other pot over here. I'm actually whoops, making a mess. I'm actually going to pull this up so in case anybody, so I can see what y'all can see to make sure I have it in somewhat focus here. Here we go. I didn't see any of these comments. Oh my goodness. Hey, Carrie. Hey, Jessica. Okay, so I am using Superwash Merino Wool. And I'm using these double burners to heat the yarn. All right, let's see. So y'all can kind of see this pan. Okay. So this pan over here, it's a, a blend. It's a merino wool and nylon blend. A well, superwash. I use superwash yarn.
go again. I'm just doing the same thing I did on the other pan. I'm just finding little spots that have white and piecing in this green. See what that corner is looking like there. It looked like a chunk of dye powder there, so I'm just kind of mushing it around there. I think I am done with the green. All right, now I'm gonna move y'all back over, swing y'all around here. I do think I wanna go back and just add a little bit more red just to make that vibrant again. You know what, I haven't been putting these in order. I thought I wanted that last. that red for some reason this is called amethyst and I always thought amethyst was like a, a purple color so imagine my surprise when it's like this reddish pink color it's still pretty but it's not what I have in my head all right let's liven that up a bit yes I think that's gonna be what I'm looking for. Hey, Molly. All right, let's see. There's a spot. We want to. Ooh, I got a lot of power there. Whoopsie. That'll be a bright spot. Or we can share it. Let's share it. See that spot there. There. Just kind of work that in. Okay, I think I'm going to be a lot happier with brightening in this up, darkening it a little. So now I'm going to do the same to the other side, and then I'm going to show y'all a really cool trick because I can't contain myself. Did I put some there? Yes. It's a bad thing about getting ahead of myself and like just speckling powder everywhere. I can't remember where I went. There we go. Yeah. 
Okay. So, like I told y'all, I can't contain myself sometimes. And I end up adding another color. But it's just going to be um, a little bit. So, I'm going to get my glove. And let me find the color. Because I'm so super organized, it's just right here. Pinning. y'all what I do. I get a little bit of dry powder and I put it in a bowl because I don't want my wet fingers in my uh, jar. So I just get a little bit on my fingers and you see these white spots? I'm just putting a pop of color in there. It's kind of the highlight. Isn't that cool? I can get a little bit carried away with this color and doing this technique. So I'm gonna to try to contain myself. Sometimes just that pop of a neon color really just like, I don't know. It's like icing on the cake. I love to use green, like a bright green or a bright yellow. A bright yellow is really good too as like a finishing touch color. See how it just, I don't know, it, to me it just ties all that together and makes those stand out even more. But it's not overpowering if you're not a like lime green fan. Or it can be if I keep going. Okay, I've got to stop. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing over here. And I'm focusing mainly on like the little white spots that I see. You could also just take this dry powder and speckle over it, but I wanted to be very, like, I wanted to control where I had the pops of color at and how much. I feel like I need just a little bit more. Yeah, I'm gonna need a little bit more. It's so fun. You see, I like I can't contain myself. I'm like a kid with finger paints. I want to color every section. <laughs> okay, I'm stepping away, stepping away. All right, so here we are. Let me wash my hands. So now what I'll do is cover this, let that heat get trapped in there and let those colors set and then
then I'm going to flip it and repeat the same thing on the other side. Um, I don't have the heat turned up too much because I wanted to be able to, ooh, excuse me, I wanted to be able to touch the yarn and things like that. Um, so it probably needs to set at least another 15 minutes or so before I can flip it and play on the other side. Okay, thank y'all for joining in the fun. Yes, isn't that amazing how it just makes it, like ties it all together? So I'm gonna try my very best to remember once this sets to come back and finish it up on a live, but when I'm like in creative mode, I can't trust myself. So I don't wanna promise that, um, but um, I will try to come back on live and finish this up so y'all can join in the rest of the fun. So I will chat with y'all later. Thank you for joining.